Oh, hello, are you there? <coughs> Cell phones on the trail become an essential part of your adventure. Now, if you don't know how to work it properly, it just becomes a very expensive paperweight. So stick with me, I'll give you some pointers, some tips and tricks. And if you stick to the end, I'll show you some settings that can improve your data and battery management. So the first thing is, do you need an Apple phone or an Android phone? Well, it really doesn't matter because all these tips and tricks will apply to both operating systems. I know my Apple, uh, so I can give some more specific direction, but they will also apply to the Android phones as well. Next one, let's talk about cases for your phone. Now I've chosen a, uh, a case for my phone that protects it from drops and falls and such, but most of the modern phones now are actually have a waterproof rating. So you don't have to worry about getting it too strong, too bulky and too big. Uh, just get one that protects your phone enough from a simple drop. Whoa. <laughs> and also maybe from scratches and bumps and bruises. But this particular case has been with this phone for about a thousand miles and it's, it's just fine. Let's talk about phone plans. One that you're in America, please get yourself an American phone plan. It's much cheaper. I'm a Canadian, so my Canadian plans work in the United States, but it's much more expensive. Uh, but the best way to do it is get a phone that has a dual SIM. This is one of the more modern phones by Apple. It includes a dual SIM. One's digital and one's physical. So therefore, before you leave your country, uh, whether it's Germany, Canada, Switzerland, or Australia, put your regular line from your home country on your digital SIM. Use your physical SIM for the American plan when you get in the United States. Where do you carry your phone? I mean, when you're in the city, you can stick it in your pocket or you can carry it in your satchel. But in my case, uh, I've tried it all sorts of places. Uh, when I have my backpack, I can put it in a, in a pocket on the outside of my shoulder strap. That works pretty good. But the problem with that I've discovered is when I take my backpack off at a break or any time I uh, pause for the day, my phone is with the backpack and I have no longer access to it if I need it for taking photographs. So therefore, what I've ended up doing is I get myself a little fanny bag. Now, this particular fanny bag is made by Northern Ultralight, and I like this one the best out of all the ones I've tested. Now, it has a nice pocket in the back, so therefore the phone fits in there. And then the contents in here, I can throw my essentials like my wallet, in this case, my headphones, my tripod, or anything else I may need. So at the end of the day, or when I take my backpack off, this is always with me. It's also wonderful when you go into town because you also have a little bag you can carry our little goodies when you go to the restaurant. Headphones on the trail. Uh, I listen to a lot of music on the trail, podcasts, listen to books. I also do video editing and my headphones are very important for me. I've tried wired headphones, but they tend to get in the way. I was concerned about Bluetooth headphones because of the extra battery use. Then, I discovered these. These are the AirPods by Apple, and they have a built-in battery pack, and other manufacturers do similar things. But the efficiency of these is quite something. The batteries are such that I can use this for a good five-day stretch, no problem, using them for like six hours a day. So don't worry about battery management with these. They just work great. Bluetooth is the way to go. That's what I'm thinking. Should you have noise cancellation or no noise cancellation? Well, I've tried both, and. The noise cancellation is, is definitely better in some ways, but on the trail, frankly, I want to be able to hear my surroundings. So I've chosen some headphones that don't have noise cancellation, so therefore I can still hear the uh, people sneaking up behind me or bears ruffling in the woods, or at night when I'm editing in my tent, I can hear the raccoons that are walking around my footprint. That being said, noise cancelling headphones, no. Get some regular headphones that are Bluetooth, and they work really well for me. These are the regular AirPods, the latest generation, and uh, they've served me very well. Also, I've added uh, my name on there as well, so that if I do drop them, hopefully some will be able to know that it's mine. The next issue is communication on the trail. Heck, that's what these phones are originally designed for, is communication. Now, there's several ways you can communicate with your loved ones at home or your friends and family. Uh, one is with a traditional phone call, then there's text, then you can do emails. You can do things like FaceTime as well or any types of Zoom calls. Then there's web browsing, such things as uh, websites and such to be able to communicate with restaurants and things. 
On the trail, often your cell signal is quite limited. Text messages use much less bandwidth than a phone call. So you can often get a text message through, but you can't get a phone call through. So when you're in situations where the bandwidth or the cell signal is quite low, uh, relying on your text messages for communicating with your friends and loved ones. Don't do the phone calls. In fact, some service providers on the trail itself exclusively try to communicate with their customers on the trail with text messages, not with phone calls, because they know that's a major issue for all the hikers on the trail. The one thing you want to stay away from generally is um, anything that involves full-blown data. Uh, that's emails um, and uh, websites, Zooms and, and video calls. They work great when you have a good solid data uh, delivery from the towers or when you're in a Wi-Fi area. But generally speaking, when you're on the trail, you're relying on a fragile cell signal. So uh, lean on your text messages. Navigation. That has become one of the most important uses of our cell phones on the trail. There are so many great apps out there that can assist you with navigation. There's the inherent mapping apps that exist with your phone, including Google Maps as well. On the trail, you probably want to go for something that's a little more specialized. I think if on the Appalachian Trail or any of the big three trails, you really want to use Far Out. But here's a tip that a lot of us have learned the hard way. All these particular um, apps that rely on GPS for helping us navigate also rely on mapping. The mapping works great when you're in the city and you've got full-blown data on your phone. But when you get in the backwoods, your data doesn't work. So therefore, these mapping systems won't work. But they've got a workaround. You can download the map before you get into the backwoods and it still connects with the satellite to your phone. It integrates with your map and you know exactly where you are. So the point here is, download your map to whatever app you're using well before you get into the backwoods and test it. Now, the way to test it is not to test it just with your phone there and go, hey, it works, because you're likely using data on your phone, actually. Turn off your data on your phone and then test it. And if it's working, then you know you've downloaded the map successfully. Music. Music is a wonderful tool on the trail. Now, you can pick tunes to help give you some energy, to help relax you, to help inspire you. There's a couple things that you need to know about music. Again, like the GPS, download it ahead of time. Because if you're a city slicker, you're used to streaming your music directly to your phone. And if you don't have it downloaded ahead of time, you'll have zero music on the trail. I also will tell you that music on the trail uses very little battery use. If you turn your screen off, put your headphones on, I can listen to music for six hours a day and use like 5% of my total battery use on my phone. It doesn't use much. As long as your screen is off and you're using nothing else, you're actually going to be able to listen to music all day, no problem at all. So if you manage your, um, your phones well, music is a wonderful way to entertain yourself on those long trails. Audiobooks and podcasts, same thing as the music. It's one way to pass the time. I use a lot of podcasts. I would download podcasts when I got into a hotspot uh, in the city with Wi-Fi and to be able to get all sorts of things that interest me. Some are stories, some are, are newscasts, uh, but again, download them to your device and then you'll be able to listen to them on the trail. If you don't not download them, you won't be able to hear it. The cell phone is a wonderful thing, but I think the camera function may be one of the most important things on the trail. It allows you to capture some of the wonderful experiences you have. Uh, that you can share with your friends and family, and maybe even more so, and a little more selfish, capture some wonderful moments that you can share with yourself later to help relive those wonderful experiences. So I'll give you a few tips and tricks I've learned about my camera. For years, I was carrying all sorts of fancy cameras, DLSLRs, uh, fancy uh, Instamatics or point and shoots, uh, and they all served me very well. But a couple years back, the smartphone started getting better and better and better. And the cameras on this phone are good enough for 95% of us. Uh, I mean, if you're a full-blown photographer, bring your DLSR, that's fine. But the cameras are so good, you just have to learn how to work them. Now, there's a few tips and tricks that I will talk about. This particular camera uh, has an ultra-wide angle lenses in this one. So with the big wide angle lens, and you're shooting at the subject in video, the image stabilization is unbelievably good. So if you're looking at moving shots, switch it to wide angle and you'll have better image stabilization. Also with this particular camera, the microphone is right here nestled amongst the lenses. 
Now that is the best microphone. There's other microphones on this particular camera as well, but that is the best one. So if you're going to be doing some video chatting, turn the camera with the back towards you and the microphone will give you the best uh, sound and the cameras will give you the best image as well. Also, if you put ultra wide angle, uh, you won't need a selfie stick because you'll be able to cover great area around you. This particular camera with all the functionality it provides now is about as good as the DSLRs from a few years back, at least good enough for the average hiker. If you choose to take video and edit them into little movies to use for yourself or for future reference or to share with your friends and family, there's a few little tips and tricks that might make it a little easier for you. If you move your camera into a portrait orientation, I said portrait orientation, that's good for Instagram shorts. But if you switch it around in this particular angle, that makes it good for you for making movies with posterity. So if you're looking for something you want to share with your friends and family and edit later in your tent or at home, you want to make videos in this particular orientation. Now, there's a few things you might want to know about video editing. If you want to do it right, you hire an editor or you'll learn how to do some fancy stuff on some fancy programs. If you're editing on the trail, you're going to have to pick an application that works for you. I found iMovie works best for a couple reasons. It uses less battery. It's simpler to use, so I'm using less time in my tent. So therefore, consider that if you're on the road and you're going to be doing some editing on the fly, especially if you're spending moments in your tent at night, consider a simple application such as iMovie. Social media has got some wonderful points. Absolutely. But for me personally, I'd like to uh, only use my socials maybe once a day. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. It uses a lot of bandwidth uh, on my data. It also uh, takes a lot of battery use. Uh, and there's only so much of both you have on the trail. So I try to manage that. If I do it in the city or into a place with Wi-Fi and with good battery use and I have some downtime, go for it. But generally speaking, I try to manage it so that I use less while I'm on the trail watching video on the trail. Well, first of all, you're not going to watch it while you're actually walking, but you may want to watch it while you're in a tent at night to catch up on an old episode of something or other. But I, I encourage you to try to avoid that. There's a couple reasons why. When the screen is on, you use more battery usage. And if you want to have some type of entertainment, try something that's audio based, whether it's music um, or podcasts or an audio book, use much less battery use. Thanks for sticking with me. These are the tips and tricks I promised you. Uh, so these are some of the settings that are going to help manage your battery as well as your data and other things on your phone to help make your adventure more relaxed. Probably the thing that uses your battery the most is having your screen on. So you want to make sure that your screen is off as much as you can. So here's some of the things that help manage that. In this particular phone, it's on right now. I just touched that button. The screen turns off. So get used to every time you're finished using your phone, whether it's for listening to music, working with navigation, or whatever the case may be, take it off. A few seconds here and there will start to add up as the day rolls on. There's also some settings you can do on your phone to help that happen naturally. I know my phone and I assume the Android phones have a similar function. The default function is when you raise your phone up, it turns on. What I mean by it turns on is the screen turns on and it's all ready to use. So turn that function off if you can. Go to the back end. You go to settings, open that up. Then you slide down to display and brightness. Open that up. Then you slide down to the toggle that says raised to wake. Turn off the toggle and you've now turned off raised to wake. When you raise your phone, see, the phone is not turning on. The only way to turn it on is for me to engage it with the button. So therefore turn that function off because it's in your bag you're moving, the screen's going to be flopping on and off all day long, gobbling up your battery. Another tip to uh, reducing the time you have with your screen on is to adjust it so that it turns off automatically. Uh, now, in this particular phone, the best setting is 30 seconds. So therefore, after 30 seconds, your screen will automatically turn off. I generally turn it off just with a flick of my button, but if you forget to do that, at least if you adjust the presets, it'll turn off after 30 seconds. Very similar to the last time, you go to settings, open that up, then you slide down to display and brightness, open that up, then you slide down to auto lock, then you open that up, and then you adjust it to 30 seconds, and now you're good to go. Another tip, 
If your phone happens to have an OLED screen, which is the more advanced uh, Apple phones as well as some of the Android phones, consider a black background and or dark mode because uh, you use less battery as well with those particular functions because the OLED screen is designed in such a way that it doesn't use as much power during the black modes. For a dark appearance, first go to setting, open that up, slide down to display and brightness, open that up, then you push the dark toggle and you're good to go. Now for the black wallpaper, you first go to settings, then you slide down to wallpaper, open that up, then you adjust customized, you go to color, you turn it to black, and you're done. Now let's go back and see what it looks like. Now this is your home screen with a black wallpaper. Another great power saving tip is airplane mode. A few years back I was on the trail and I didn't know about this. So I put my phone in my pocket, didn't use it all day long, got to my campsite at the end of the day and my battery was down to zero. Now what I discovered was the phone itself is constantly searching for cell towers, constantly searching for Wi-Fi networks. And if you don't put it into airplane mode, it's going to be just gobbling up your battery juice all day long as your phone is doing all those back end chores. So make sure you put it into airplane mode. If you get to camp and you feel like you need to communicate, turn it off and start to work your, your data, your cell phone or whatever the case may be. There's more than one way to get to airplane mode, but let's go through settings, open that up and there's the airplane mode toggle waiting for you right there. But generally, airplane mode is the way to be on the trail. Another important tip is to manage expectations with your friends and family. When you're in the city, you probably heard something like this. Geez, how come Dudley didn't text me back? It's because they don't understand that while you're on the trail, you're in airplane mode. And you may or may not be able to text them for days on end because of the cell network itself. So tell all your friends and family not to expect a text message or a phone call right away because you're gonna be in airplane mode. While you're on the trail, this phone is very important to you. And you may drop it, you may leave it at a campsite. I recommend putting your name on the back. In this case, I've got my name as well as an email address. But on the lock screen, I've also created uh, my name as well as a contact information as well. So both those things will probably help you if in fact you forget your phone. I know a lot of you purists out there sometimes don't think cell phones are maybe a part of the trail, but I disagree. There are so many wonderful uses on the trail to help enhance your adventure. But like all parts of your kit, you have to understand how they work. If you don't manage your uh, battery usage, uh, the cell and, and data management as well, uh, if you don't understand how the apps work, if you don't understand all the capabilities and the functionalities of that particular device, you're not going to get the best use of it. And in fact, this particular device, this very expensive device, will become a very expensive paperweight.